Welcome to lesson number five in my blues series. And today we're in another wash here in southern Arizona. You can't really see what I'm standing in front of, but it's quite evident that there's been some pretty outrageous water flows through here. Bone dry now. So this is another one of the ephemeral rivers in Arizona. It's quite seasonal. So if you haven't listened and watched and practiced along with the first four lessons, you probably should start there because we're building each lesson up with some new skills and some new theory knowledge too, for that matter. We are just covering a very basic chord structure, which is what underlies most blues progressions, 12 bar blues, three chords. Most of you know that already. We're in the key of G, G blues. All of the chords are dominant seventh. I covered the arpeggios for the first two chords in that progression, the G7 and the C7. Today we're gonna add the D7 arpeggio tones and we'll work from this shape. We worked from this basic bar shape for the first chord, the G7. We worked from this bar shape for the C7, and we're gonna switch it up to this new shape. So what do we got here? Third finger, D, second finger, F sharp, fourth finger, C, first finger, D. We're focusing on just the inside four strings. For those of you who may not know this chord, you probably know how to play a C chord. And it is the C chord shape with the addition of the fourth finger right here on string three. So we're gonna start our exploration of this arpeggio from the root of this chord, the D. So we're gonna play the one, the three, the five, the flat seven, and then we're back to the root up here on string two. It really helps to play the chord first. I like to form a relationship both in my muscle memory and visually what I'm looking at on the fingerboard between a shape of a chord and the arpeggio of it. So here's the shape and the arpeggio starts with the first two notes that you're already holding down for the chord. One, three, now I'm referring to the scale degrees here. One, three, five, flat seven. And remember to pay particular attention to the third and that flat seven. Those two notes contain the personality for the dominant seventh chord. Let's extend this up now from there because we're gonna run out of strings pretty quick. We can't complete the next octave worth of this arpeggio from this position, from this shape. But there's the D, and here's the F sharp, and there's the A. So I hit the chord again, and then randomly jump around inside of that arpeggio. Practice some hammer-ons with it, practice some vibrato. Now we have plenty of resources that we can play through the 12 bar blues using a different approach. We're not using the blues scale, we're using target tones that are found inside of the arpeggio for each of the chords. As they go by, I'm going to switch to a different focus note. So let's do a 12 bar blues. We're going to do four bars of the G7. That's one bar. 
has two bars. That's the fourth bar. That's C7. I could also play C9 in place of C7. That's two bars. And two bars of the G. One bar of the D7 or D9. C7 or C9. One bar of the G7, and then one bar of the D7 for the turnaround. Now, without me playing the chords, see if you can hear the chord changes in my lead. One, two, three. G, D7. I threw in one extra note there when it went to the C chord. I actually hit this D. We're going to talk about how to expand the arpeggio approach in upcoming lessons. But for now, what you want to do ideally is either download a track from my website or go on to YouTube or wherever you like to go and download tracks. Grab one that's in the key of G if you can find one. And it could just be a real simple blues. You want it to be simple, and you want it to be kind of slow. Maybe a little shuffle like. Something like that would be good. Some of you might be thinking, why didn't he just keep this a little simpler and take the same arpeggio shape that he used for that C chord and simply just move it up to the D up here at the fifth fret? And you can do that. You can definitely do that. I wanted to bring in one additional chord shape. But if you're more comfortable just moving this C7 form up to D, that's fine. And again, you're going to get the coolest and sort of most musical value if you learn these arpeggios on a very deep level and can then visualize where the closest note is from the one you just left with the idea that you may have finished. See what I'm saying? So if I'm playing G blues and I ended up on a G and then the chord switches to C7 or C9, I can stay on that note if I want to. That note is also in the C chord, you see? It's not gonna sound that great when it goes to the D chord because it's not directly linked up very closely with the D chord. But if I went down a half step, I'd say, well, that's a really good note because th that's in the chord, or if I went up to here. So literally, you can play through a blues using two or three notes very close together. And a lot of people do this sort of thing. So if I started out with like this little, those are from the, from the G chord, right? And then it goes to the C chord, I could shift them very close and, and to these. See, why did I shift there? Because that note is part of the C7 chord. That note's part of C7. Back to G. to C, or I can go up to here, or for the G, I could go to here, and then the, the D, the D7, I go to here, okay, because those are part of the D chord, or I could go to here, and then here's
here's a C7. These are nice little shapes to know. That's a C7, and then back to G. All right, so this sounds a little bit too simplistic. Please stick around because we're going to begin adding tones now to these basic arpeggio sounds. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.